I'll ask it. The only thing me. is that if uh, when, when you are or or you or somebody is making questions, do not overrate my English. That I could miss a little bit. So oh, uh, we are not worried about your English, Julio. Do not worry about that. That is uh, not a, that is. A I non have a question issue. for you. Are you Jewish? No, I'm not. You're not. I, I'd like to be. I want to be. <laughs> I, I would like to. We have so much surus, Julia. Why would you want to be Jewish? We have so much surus. Not this week you wouldn't want to be. <laughs> because I feel like that the roots of my culture came from there and I love everybody, every, oh. ev everything about your culture. So I, I, I always felt like that before this movie. That's probably oh, they, so nice. why they called me. That's, you see, you should talk about that too. That's so sweet. Yeah, I, mean, I have to tell you, not only the first time I watched the film, but the second time I cried. Oh, oh yeah, I cried. Oh, I asked. The first time I already knew in my heart that it was the grandmother. And that's what made me so emotional to think that it came so full circle. Amazing. Yeah. Just amazing. All right. Um, so I think I'm gonna start letting people in because it's yeah. it's nine minutes to do. So that way, because there's gonna be a lot of people coming in. Arlene, I'm gonna make you a co-host. Julio, would you like to be co-host? One minute. Would he like to be co-host? Yeah, I don't know if he needs to share anything. I don't know. I'm going to ask him. But I'll make you co-host so you can help me let people in. Okay? How do I let people in? You'll say they'll pop up on your screen and you just hit admit. It's really not hard. Oh, because I've never, I've never been. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's, it's a cakewalk. It's okay. a walk in the park, sweetie. All right, honey. You look they'll great, They'll literally Mark. pop up and you hit admit and that's it. You look great. <laughs> Thank you. Where am I? Sorry. I can't even see you. I, I, had a, see. I had a, an issue with my the my 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 kids what cars key, so I had to no keep it. No problem. All right. No problem. It's all good. So, Julia, do you need to be a co-host? Do you have anything you're going to be sharing screen or anything like that? Or no, excuse me. Do you need to be a co-host? Is there anything you will need in terms of like do you need to share screen for anything? We're just talking, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm okay with everything. Okay, super. All right, so we'll just let people start coming in. Yeah. Okay. Because we had it's only we still have seven minutes before we start, but there were so many people in the waiting room. Oh, I wanted right. to start getting them in because there's going to be a lot of people coming on. Good. Good. Hi, yeah, Martha. It was, it was great. Hey, Arlene. <laughs> oh, I'm at Rachel. <laughs> you were saying, uh, Arlene, I, I. I I like very much that you cry, not because I like when people cry, but because it means that- well, It was very we... emotional. It, it really was. And yeah. like I said, when I watched it the first time and it dawned on me that it was the grandmother, I thought, wow, you know, I mean, those stories happen in real life. It happened, when, yeah. But on the screen, I'm, I'm a very emotional person. So it just, it just really hit me right here in my heart. Arlene, when oh. did you figure out it was the grandmother, or did you? I did the first time I saw it. Yeah. And I saw it before all of you did, because, right. and, and I just sat here by myself, and I had tears coming down my face, and I thought, wow. Wow, wow. Yeah, it was wonderful. Thank you. And it was actually, what was I loved about it was that it was actually a happy movie. It had oh, such yes. an uplifting... <laughs> Such an uplifting story, and uh. and you know, um, we made a vow this year not to show too many, if any, Holocaust films mm -hmm. because we always do Holocaust films. Sure. And of course, when you watch your film, the Holocaust is what you see in the very beginning. And I was thinking, I hope that when other people see it, they don't say to themselves, "Oh, another Holocaust film," because it really wasn't. Well, no, I'm actually going to send something out after this because it's 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 live till late tonight. So I will okay. send something out and tell people they have to see it if they haven't seen it already. It's just too fabulous. Can I tell you, Marsha, I have been trying to get on to see it and I haven't been able to. I'm not getting a link. Every That's time I go in, it brings me to the book. And I'm unable to get to the film. Rachel, you want to take that one? I've been trying to see this. I've wait, been... Ollie, if you can go ahead in the chat and send me your um, email, I will send it to you right now. Thank you very much. 
Is anybody else having trouble getting in? I hope not. I heard, uh, but the people I was with Friday night services and Saturday, they all told me they couldn't get in. What? I, no, I, I, I have friends telling me. I spoke with you. They had no trouble. Friends told me it was great, so I knew they had no trouble. They got in. That's so weird. All right. Well, we'll have to see. Um, we'll make an announcement on this call that if people haven't seen it yet and still want, you know, obviously want to, especially. And so, so just so you know, Sharon, there'll be a few spoilers because of the conversation. Yeah, I, I knew that there would be spoilers. It's fine. Okay. I All still, right. I, I want to hear, you know, what people have to say. It won't spoil it for me. It'll no, it, make it, it more enjoyable to watch. It really won't because it just, it's so, it's powerful and. And I saw the trailer. That's as far as I got. Was yeah. the trailer. That oh, was you it. missed the best part. It was. But I, had, I wasn't able to go anywhere. I understand. Yeah. yeah. I was really disappointed. Well, you'll get it. Okay. You, I just sent my email. It's live through midnight tonight. until 11.59 p.m. So you've got plenty of time even after this to see it. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Hi, this is Nadine. Um, I just want to say, my, my husband and I watched the movies together. We're part of the preview team. And this one, he really, he sat and watched with, in, in front of the TV, because we um, zoom it to our, uh, we Vimeo it to our large screen TV. And this one, he really enjoyed also. We both were highly recommending this this movie it was really incredible so thank you very much thank you thank my you my husband the same Nadine he was with me the whole time he never got up he never it was great <laughs> I'm sorry I said my husband was the same he didn't lose interest in the middle he wasn't getting up he was like totally with me for the whole film yes it was great and what was said before about it being uplifting, one of the um, criteria that I had, we all as did. opposed to not too many uh, Holocaust movies, was that it be uplifting, movies yeah. be uplifting, because people have been so um, homebound over the last year and a half that anything depressing, I just, I couldn't take. And... Right. Um, this one, th this one act made me feel good. So again, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Sorry, guys. I just had to do something. I think I have. Ah, there it is. Where are we? Oh, 12.58. Okay, we're going to be able to start in just two minutes. And I'll introduce you and all will be right with the world. <laughs> we're expecting close to 50 people, so we're only at 15. I'm wondering if <laughs> people forgot. I'm not worried about numbers, Marsha. I know you're not, Julio. I know. I know you're not. <laughs> You'll have a great audience no matter what. Uh, exactly. I, three, five, one million is the same. Uh-huh. I've heard very, very good reviews from people about your movie. Sure. I'm very much looking forward to watching it. Thank you. Yeah, I'm so sorry that you couldn't get it, but I'm sure they will solve the problem. Oh, we absolutely will. Okay. Everybody of you is in Connecticut right now? Everybody on this call right now so far is in Connecticut, as far as I know. It's all okay. our community, like people might be somewhere else, but it's our community that's here in Connecticut. Yeah. Great, great, great. Um, okay, so I'm going to, oh, people are really popping on now. Um, I'm going to start just by introducing you, Julio, so that everybody knows, and I'll do a little introduction, and I will turn it over to you. If everybody could stay muted while Julio is talking, 
and then we'll have a little time for some Q&A at the end, which will be great. Um, so don't go away. So this, so the director and actually the father in the film is Giulio Obasse. He was born in Turin, Italy in 1964. Giulio achieved two doctorates, the first in literature and philosophy and the second in theology. Since 1996, he has been a Mensa member, which is the society of people whose IQ is in the top 2% of the population. He began his career, that's amazing. He began his career as an actor studying in Florence at the School for Dramatic Art established by the Italian master Vittorio Gassman. After many years playing with Italian directors such as Nani Moretti or Internationals, recently All the Money in the World by Sir Ridley Scott, he made his film directorial debut with the worldwide prize winning film Crack in 1991, inspired by a successful theatrical piece that he wrote for the stage. From then on, Julio directed 29 titles starring many awarded movie stars such as Shelley Winters, F. Murray Abraham, Omar Sharif, Max von Sydow, Dolph Lundgren, Monica Cruz, Paul Servino, and more. And on that note, Julio, I would love to hear more. Welcome to our call. Thank you so much for taking the time from Italy to be with us. Um, Julio is coming from Italy live. So, um, Julio, tell us about the film, how you got involved. I'm going to give the floor to you, and then we'll go from there. All right. Thank you for inviting me. I'm very happy to be here with you. It's a uh... It's a gray afternoon in Rome. The, the, the hot weather is not coming yet. So I'm very happy to be with you. Uh, as you said, this is my 29th title that I directed, but I was very honored the moment when the producer called me and asked me to read this script. Because the idea of the, of the, of the movie came from Israel Cesare Moscati, which was a, a very eminent member of the Jewish community in Rome. Ah. I, I say it was because unfortunately he died before we start we started shooting the movie. And he was a, a seven kind of 70 years old man which uh, had kind of the same, uh, stories, at least his family had some similar to what the, the baby, the girl has in the movie. I didn't know him. I met him. He was an extraordinary man. He did uh, not work in the movie business all his life. He did other things. But in the last four or five years of his life, he started to make documentary about Shoha. Uh, movies about his problems and his being part of the Jewish community. He wanted to direct this movie, but uh, the producers, because he was a newcomer and he was not experienced in, 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 in movie directing, they wanted somebody experienced that could, you know, uh, have the weight of, of a movie. You know, the movie even... Uh, a movie like this one, which is not a big budget, but still moves a lot of money, as you probably know. So it's not something that you could give to somebody who never has done this before. But anyway, in the, in, I started to work with him and uh, I could say that probably I was the, I was the living, living human being with which Israel passed his last months because you know when you work on a script when you arrange for locations when you talk about what he had in mind etc we really uh, exchange a lot of thoughts that are my in my heart forever when uh, when Israel died uh, we were in pre-production and um, the the producers who are Rai Cinema, which is the biggest network in Italy, is like, I don't know, oh, oh, you have CNN, CBS, I mean, uh, the biggest channel that we have in Italy. They wanted a Christian uh, director because of the Jewish writer and, and, you know, for mixing up a little bit, as in the 
story kind of balance the thing. And uh, so uh, from that moment on, when, when um, Israel was not with us anymore, I started probably one of the, the most remarkable collaboration in the way of my life with the Jewish rabbi, the chief rabbi of Rome, Riccardo Schmel di Segni, which is a, an immense man of culture, of memory, of kindness, of uh, intelligence. He's a, he's a very tough man in a way. He's a man that wouldn't speak to the Pope to make an example because he's a, he's a very sharp in his beliefs. And uh, so working with him on the script, working with him uh, um, during the shooting days, uh, in, and especially in the editing room, because there are there were a lot of little things that had to be adjusted by truth, because the movie, as you probably have witnesses, is not just about a, a, a beautiful movie. I mean, I hope you like it, but it was not about be uh, beautiful or sweet or cheesy. I don't know how to say. It's about truth. That's what we wanted. That's what we were searching for. So it was it was very helpful to me working with him, and and so I say thanks to him and to all the Jewish community of Rome that for the first time in his history opened uh, the door to a movie because you 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 never you never saw something like that inside the synagogue, the big temple of Rome, inside the the pool, inside the schools. Oh, even for a matter of uh, security that you probably know very well in a city like Rome, you know, but we are uh, friends. Uh, Rome is the oldest Jewish community in the world beside Jerusalem. So uh, for us, it's not a kind of uh, living together. It's part of, it's, they are like our older brothers. Uh, that's how we feel. And uh, there was, it, in a way, it was very difficult for me because, um, I mean, it, it's very touchy. What, what, what I was trying to tell is something very so delicate that it was difficult not to go in, in something that I didn't want to go. But for other things, it was very easy because, like, for example, locations, they were mandatory. And when, when you write uh, the, the Jewish community in Rome in a script, you can go farther. That's the place where they are. The synagogue is this one. The temple and the school is just that one. It's not like, I don't know how it works in, in, in Connecticut, but I know well New York, I know well Los Angeles. There are you know many places around the city where you can find Jewish community. In Rome, it's like a little center in the, in the heart of Rome, of the people, a, a beautiful uh, endeavor and you, and you witnesses in the movie. And so we, we have to shoot there. And also I was very careful to make uh, what, the, what the dreams of Israel come true. And in fact, my greatest satisfaction of this movie that is giving to me a lot of satisfaction, awards, festival like yours. Uh, we've been to, of course, to the United States, but to South America, in Sydney, have been in theaters because, you know, Australia didn't get a, a bad, a bad COVID, bad pandemia, so it was in the theaters. Uh, we've been to, uh, we will be in the Shanghai Film Festival in China in the next June, which is the biggest Asian film festival, of course, in Rome. I mean, the four continents. I miss, we miss Africa and then the movie has traveled all around the world. But the greatest satisfaction was at the premiere in Rome where the kids, the, the children, because they are <laughs> grown men, uh, the children of Israel was there, his wife, they cried, they hugged me, they thanked me. And that was the greatest satisfaction for me. Beside the critics, Beside the great numbers that in Italy the movie has done, even if it's in, in only by platforms, but that's how we count the numbers right now. Beside everything that I was 
not worry, but I was dedicated all my work, all my effort to make the Israel dream come true. And I hope that I made it. That's the introduction. Then whatever is in your interest, I could you know, speak for weeks, <laughs> but I'd like to say something that you probably interest you, Marsha, if you'd like to ask me something, the process or whatever, whatever you feel is good to know. So just want to clarify for what you've said about Israel. Um, did he write this? He wrote this. Did you guys write it together? And you said it was based on his story. So is some of this based on truth? Is it completely true? I wasn't clear on what that's where that was. Can you clarify yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, sure. He wrote the story, not the script. I mean, he tried to work the script, but as I told you, he wasn't the real man of the business. So he had a lot of ideas. He was really creative. He was passionate about it. So if I, I if I put down on paper all the ideas that he had, it could be a, a, a serious because he wanted to put in a movie everything, all history, everything. But then but then we managed to, to make a, a movie, you know, a 90, I don't know, 100 minutes movie. And yes, it's based on a story that his grandmother had, or his, yes, his grandmother. It's not the real story. I mean, uh, it's based on different stories, but they, they are real, they happen. Uh, because in those sad months and days of this craziness about German people, but even Italian people, we have to be honest, there were a lot of, not only Italian, I mean, a lot of Europeans that were blind, let's say blind, but we could say coward. I don't know what to say, but I mean, a lot of people that, if you see your brothers uh, arrested, deported, you have to say, at least to say something. So uh, the problem was big, but, Fortunately, it is true that a lot of churches or monastery or priests or nuns, they helped a lot of Jews. That is true. I mean, by the facts, by the books, by the memoir. Now the people who really leave those things are, you know, less and less and less every day because we are talking about 70 and something, 74, uh, seven years ago. But um, yeah, I, I didn't mention another person that really helped me, which is the professor Claudio Procaccia, which is the, the real archivist of the Jewish community in Rome, which is a genius, which is probably the, the I mean, the character of Volterra, no? the, the old guy that helps, the, the, is I him. I was ask you about that, yeah. That is him. He knows, and, and that's another lesson that I learned before you asked for me, um, uh, Arlene asked for me if I was Jewish. I'm, I, I'm not, but I want to be. And when I say people like him, I really appreciate the way when the, when the Torah say that if somebody has no name, doesn't exist. When I, when I had and I spent time with Claudio Procaccia, that you really care about the single people deported, where did he go? Where did she finish? Where, when did he come back? I mean, it was an extraordinary experience of the single human being, every single human being, the research enormous of every one of them, from which family they came, when they go, when they come back, if they come back, a lot of them, they didn't. And, um, so it's, 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 so it's also true that a lot of monastery and churches help the people. So it's not about one single person because we wanted to develop in a different way as you, know, as you see in a movie, the, especially uh, the, the nowadays moments you know, with the younger and, uh, and what had happened before, but everything is reliable everything is based on true events, even if they are not the real names and the real facts. Yeah, I have to say, I thought the way you wove in 
the teenagers and social media and how yeah. they used it. That was, that was brilliant. Um, mm. how, how did, how did that come to be? Like, was that planned? Was it always planned to be modern day? Was it maybe possibly going to be some, another time period? Yeah, no, no. Israel really wanted to make a movie of today, and that was a great, a great uh, illumination for me because it was really. I will. I tell you the truth. When I when I when I received that call to direct this movie, I feel, I remember that I was honored. Starting from the title, when, when the producer of Rai Cinema told me the project is called Un Cielo Stellato, also where I'll get to the Roma, that means a size capital, I already say thank you, wow, because I right away I discovered that there was something so important to tell. So I was honored because, uh, I mean, it's a big piece of history, a big responsibility. So, I mean, Every one of us has a ego. I, I tried to push him down, but they felt in that moment, wow, they they feel that I could be responsible for a, such an important history that you know premiered in Italy on January 26, which is the day of memory. It's, it's a very important matter. So you know, it, it was a big it was a big issue. Mm. At the same time, beside the honor. Five minutes before it comes the duty, I immediately understand that I had to study, I had to research, I had to work hard because of the duty of the memory. That is the importance of the movie like that. Not about, not just about the Holocaust, as we say before, we, we have seen and I've seen <laughs> again before preparing, prepping prep, prep for the movie, a lot of movie even so much important for for history for 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 a human being i think from spielberg to benigni to ponte corvo you name that there are mm -hmm. masterpieces but this tried because of the illumination of, of uh, israel to talk to the new generation not only about the holocaust and the shoah but what could born from there how we can move forward from there and I, I think there was such an important idea because these people, these young people, even more important, they did not just research in a passive way. Mm -hmm. They do something active. They research, then there is the lady, the, the young lady that writes, they put it in a scene, they make the production design, somebody make the custom, somebody uh, shoot with a camera. Uh, they are, of course, they are actors. Of course, they are musicians. So they are doing a lot of things, especially arts that interests me a, a lot. And I think it's very important to the young generation to give them a cue about arts. But they are doing something to end more important or even more important, together, Christian and just together, to create something for the future. So in, in a happy way too, because it's not just the, you know, the, how do you say, the, 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 the dure and the, the hard and pure movie that makes heavy, the thing heavy. No, they're working, they're studying, they're researching, but they're having fun. Yeah. And uh, social media, and that's why I try to avoid any kind of rhetoric to the black and white scene, the reconstruction. You probably notice there are no real words in those moments, in the same moments, because I try to be very authentic for those moments. They were very delicate. In the, in the first five minutes of the movie, you realize there are not a single word. Right. It just right. a movie. I was very aware of that. It just because it's too. I mean, if you're making a movie today, that's too difficult to touch to say something that is not already said or could not sound silly. I try to make a, like a kind of a documentary made in the in, in the forty, and then it's important the message that we go and we give to the new generations. And it, the movie made with them for them, and that's a, I, I'm I'm pretty proud of, and I'm sure 
that Israel would be. It's very sad that he passed before you even started filming. Yeah. yeah you know, I'd, like to, I'd like to make a comment. Um, I think it was beautiful. Uh, you know, we are living in the year 2021 and the, the Jewish people are not the only people who are intermarrying different faiths, different races, what have you. I, I thought it was very interesting that one of the boys in the movie, while he was falling in love with her, he knew that it would be an objection to his family. And when she went to the mikvah and she converted to Judaism, it just brought the whole thing full circle. It really did. I thought it was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. It's all, it's all, I mean, all the, these ideas as Israel is mine, I'm honest. So <laughs> I, I just, it, I was the executor, I did my best, but all these ideas was from him. And, uh, and I told you, it was like a lot of ideas that were like great, brilliant and from, from, from a man who never made a movie in his life or never wrote a script. It was perfect. I mean, Dan was messy, of course. His script was messy. We couldn't never shoot his script because it was like, even, even in the form, you know, movie script need a form. It's like, for somebody who knows the music, you could have all the music of the best music in your head, but if you're not putting in notes and in the pentagram, then the, then the, the musician, they don't know what to play. That in the movie is kind of the same thing. You have to put it in the scene, location, how many actors you need, etc. But all the ideas, they were brilliant. There was his, and even this one, you're right. Even at, at the end, she converted, but the, the nanny converted in another way. And, and, and it's not cheesy at the, when, at the end. Because she converted now, they could love one each other. N not even in those moments. We will see. Yeah. Tomorrow is another, is, is another day. To, 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 to quote Gone with the Wind. It's not that the line, but I mean, the, the, the kind of the meaning is the same. Yeah, that was well done. Um, I have a question for you about how you came to end up playing the, the father and how um, was, was it, and this is a separate question, so it's two questions. Um, was it difficult or challenging to be able to film at the convent as well as to film at the school and then in the synagogue? like? How complex was that to get those? Because those sites obviously were very important to the film. Yeah, sure. Uh, how come did I make the father? I, I studied as an actor, as you read in my bio, and uh, and I and I like to play, and it, it really was my first passion, and I'm still uh, like to play because it's a. Uh, to imagine that in, in Italian, play, play acting is the, the verb is recitare. It is not the same the same verb like to play that we say giocare. In English, to play is like to play with kids, to play football, to play I don't know basketball, to play whatever. It's and and, and to play like to act. and in French is the same thing. When you when you act, you joue, joue or playing football and it's joy. So it's a, it's a big play to act. So I love it. And um, in, in the first movies that I've done, we are talking about 30 years now, <laughs> as you read, my first one was in 1991. So it's exactly 30 years. In the first, yes, in the first I casted myself because I really wanted to be there. During Along the Road, uh, I, I kind of missed the, that need and I, and I focused on my movies, like my story, my direction, and that was my first object, uh, my first target, my first object to, to follow. But still now, I, and I, I'm never casting myself until <laughs> when some producer came and say, why don't you make this part is perfect for you? I, I even do not let him finish the, the phrase. They say, yes, <laughs> because, because I love it. But I, I, as I said before, I, I'm fighting with my ego. So I do not want to put my, you know, my face and say, oh, and, but if somebody suggested, and in this case means that I was kind of right for the part, 
and some sometime you misjudge yourself or you lose your you know judgment when you're talking about yourself right for the part or not the actors think they are well for every part so <laughs> for somebody it's probably true it's not my case mm -hmm. so i and in this case it was also very helpful because i casted also to all my kids and so it was a kind of mixing they and even making the father of the leading female you know was kind of de developing this kind of i was not only the director but also like a, a, a fatherly figure and for my kids i was for sure the real father so <laughs> In the group, there was this feeling that I was, yes, the director, they have to respect because of blah, 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 you know, the cinema rules, but also a father. And, and the father that they love because I, I try to be a tender father. And so, and for the me, it was almost the same. Of course, I did not do any preference for my kids. So I treated like every other actors, but in the same way, every other actors was my kid. So I really was a father of every uh, boys and girls that were in the set. So it was a, a good intuition, in my opinion, from the producer to have me in the cast, not only for what I could add to the movie with my performance, but also as a way to be, you know, um, conceived also as a father, not only as a director to say, yes, director, mm -hmm. and, but working together as a family. And uh, for the second question, as I said, yes, the location was were mandatory because I, I did not have the choose, like in, a, in other script, you know, you say, okay, restaurant in the center. And so you could decide in, the, I don't know, 2000 restaurant in the center room. Uh, when you say the biggest synagogue, you have to show there that the, the, the the gymnasium, the high school, you have to shoot there but this, but because there is that one and that's it. And uh, talking about, so it was a great hand that the Jewish community of Rome opened their arm for us and it was not easy. And I know because I, I had experience before and probably I will have in the future when you have to shoot there, uh, they are very tough. They say no a lot of things, a lot of times, but not because they are bad, because of the because they are work, living there, they are working there, they are praying there, and for security reason, because they they want the script to be real, as we say, it. and uh, and I understand they're right, they made it, they made it right, it's 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 fine for me they do like that, and talking about the monastery that. It, that was a big research because I wanted a place like this one. I wanted to have all the spaces that you see in the movie, the arch, the you know the the, the court in the middle, and also that door that opens on the Vatican that you probably realize that is Saint Peter. I mean, showing that back on that monastery there was also the Vatican that was like for sure involved in, in that craziness, in that stupid moments of humanity that pushes a few uh, thousands of people to try to kill uh, dozens, millions of people. So probably the darkest moment in, in human history, probably. And the Vatican has it's responsibility. I mean, even if I'm Christian, I'm not hiding be behind a finger. That's what happened. So I wanted that. Yes, there is this man who is enlightened, they're open, but beside that is also uh, back on that door, there's also somebody who is not. So I, so I wanted that monastery precisely. And uh, and they gave it to us. And it was fun. That's a good story to to tell. My, one of my friends, I mean, I, I am honored to be his friend, is Steven Zillian, which is probably the, brilliant, the, most, the most important and, and, and good 
screenwriter of the world, the one who wrote uh, Schindler's List, for example, or American Gangster for Ridley Scott, or The Irishman for Martin Scorsese last year, I mean, the greatest one. He was in Italy because he was looking for some location for his movie. And uh, which is also has some uh, Jewish implication in the history. So he didn't call me that time, he was around. And so he came close to our monastery where we were shooting. They said, no, you can enter because they're shooting. Oh, okay, who is shooting? And it's the Julia Buzz's movie. I mean, like the policeman, the guy, I don't know. And he said, it's my friend, please, I want to enter. So when I was shooting there, that's funny. Um, uh, one of the, uh, I don't know, the, probably a gripper or a gaffer, somebody of the of the crew came there and said, oh, there is that, uh, an Academy Award winner that wants to talk to you. And it was like, oh, we find Girardi, please, silent, I am shooting here. It's not the moment to make jokes. And, and so I, I keep shooting. And then the next one, I mean, kind of a bigger in the, in the hierarchy of the movies, like, I don't know, the, the, the assistant of the producer. Oh, there is a guy, I'm, I'm an Academy Award winner that wants to, oh, but people, guys, I'm shooting here. There's no time and, until Steve, I don't know how he managed to come uh, to the set, to, you know, to, uh, through, the, through the barriers, he entered and, I, and I, well, it was not the joke of Steve. So I hacked him and so I had this great honor to show the scene. Uh, under his eyes also. And uh, actually he, he, he saw the movie and liked it very much. So uh, I don't know what, what, why I said, ah, because he was looking for a monastery, him right. too. And, and so he liked very much the monastery where we shot. And I don't know, he now is back to US to get his vaccine and will come back. And I don't know if he chose or not that monastery. It was, it will, should that's not a, a spoiling it will shoot the, another version of replay's game from uh, is that patricia Ismi? did they say well um, I'm not, yeah i think I mean, a great american novel so we have two more we have two other questions and actually one of them i was curious too which actors were your children oh yeah they are uh the the Vittorio, the young guy of the black and white moment, the dancer to make you understand, the uh -huh. one the, who fell in love with the nun when she was young. Ah, so, okay. Yeah, the dancing history, the first kiss on the Tiber. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately is deported. I mean Vittorio Zevi from a Jewish from a Jewish family. And, and his real name is Vittorio, which is a Jewish name, but I, I love this name and so I gave it to him. And the second one is the one who in nowadays plays the violin, then, uh, you know, is not uh, one of the lead, but stays in the group. The one who filmed with camera, the one who dances again. And I wanted to make this kind, because they are similar, the two brothers, yes. So, you know, and, and, and you have seen the movie, so you, you see there are many levels. So in the different levels, the dancers are the same one. Yeah. And um, so Valerio, even if he's not, he has not a name in the, in the movie, was with me and with us every time, because you see that the group is, yes, there are six kind of leads, but then the group is 15, 20 boys right. and girls that were with us every day. The group was great. The teenagers were really wonderful. Yeah. 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 Um, so the another question, um, who was directing you while you were acting? Did you direct <laughs> yourself or did somebody else step in? Yeah, that is something that I managed to do when I was younger and I know how to do and my crew knew me very well. So they know I'm completely crazy. So I could <laughs> kind of imagine this is the, the monitor and this is the scene I could play like that and then cut and I watch right away. <laughs> so they know me. So that I had monitors in every, like in the, in the limo, the scene in the limo. Yes, I was talking on the phone, but out of the frame, there are like monitors everywhere. So I could take and check on my, my performance. So yes, I directed myself. 
Good for you, because it was great. Do most people who direct themselves do it that way, or are there other ways to do that? But the actors, the directors that I know, they pretty much do the same stuff. Pretty much. I mean, in the biggest production that I never had the experience to witness, I don't know, Mel Gibson in Braveheart or whatever, Robert Redford in his movies or uh, today, who, who does that? Kevin Costner in Dance with Wolves. They probably had 12 assistant directors. So, you know, they kind of, uh, probably they give signals to the, to the crew, but then they go to the monitors to check on their performance. Um, in my case, it's in the little scale, it's pretty much the same. I mean, uh, you are, you have your assistant who, who say, uh, let's go take action and stuff. And then about, you know, I mean, my performance, I got to watch myself at the monitor and I'm, I'm very tough with myself too. With, I mean, also with the other actors, I, I like the scene to be right. There was, there was a tremendous um, camaraderie that came across between the kids, among the kids, with all of them. Were they, um, any of them know each other beforehand? And if not, did they spend a lot of time sort of hanging out together? Obviously, when you're filming and you're doing a show, you do. But was, was there maybe a little more than normal? Uh, it was just, there was so much connection between the kids. It was real, and it came across, it was wonderful. And it was interesting because it started out where the two girls and the two main boys, you know, there was, they would have nothing to do with each other. And then this tremendous friendship came out. It was so well done. Yeah. Marsha, I agree. I agree. And I thank you for saying that. And I'm happy that it is noticeable because it really probably one of the strongest thing of the movie is that. And this is, to be honest, it's just a matter of luck. Because uh, no matter how much time you spent on, re on um, you know, testing, no much, how about much time and, you know, care you put in, the, in reading with access and meeting them, then when, when it comes to, to work together, it could happen everything, you know, because they are kids. So, but so my, the, the casting process was uh, really well done. And, and, and honestly, it was my first uh, concern. When I started working in the prep of the movie, I say, the most important thing, absolutely the first one, we have to find the right guys. Mm -hmm. So my casting director, Teresa Razzavuti, was so helpful because she, I don't know, she probably taped thousands, thousands, literally, of. Mm -hmm young actors and, 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 and even not, not actors, actors and actresses. Once again, Israel helped me because he had, uh, he, he was done in the last years, a little, how do you say, workshop with young actors that he wanted to be in a movie. And, 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 um, and in fact, a few of them, they are in the movie, like the, the young nun, She's one of the worship of of uh, Isa, and she's she's great. I mean, I think she's she's really great. And uh, so after all this process for my casting director, that the moment that I enter in in, in scene, and I have to be honest, I I, I already have a good uh, feeling in in for young people, because when you are a father and you see your children, and if you, if you love them, they are good, you have hope for the next generation. And so I'm, I'm a lucky father, my kids are good, and I see they even more good than me. And so I hope that the, the world will be better. In fact, in a way, the world is always better. Mm -hmm. They, yeah, they could be up and down, but if you think an our time when the Roman emperor could come and say, hey, Giulio, you, I don't like you, kill him. You know, the world has changed. That hasn't happened in Can't happen any place in the world. Not anymore. At least so we, 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 you know, we, we grew up. 
And uh, so for sure, they, were, they, they are better. But I didn't expect to find so many good uh, actors and actresses, and especially so focused, so uh, responsible, so they understand so well. I mean, as what happened to me, the first, the famous first phone, phone call, Hunter and right away the duty, it was the same. Of mm. course, they fight to get the role. Of course, they was anxious. Of course, they jumped with joy when I called and say, you know, your current is yours. But right away, five minutes later, we have to work. We have to make this right. Because this is important for our generation, for the next generation, we have to be. And, and so they were very focused. And, was, and, and you're right, started a comrade from them. Uh, uh, a cameraship, a friendship right away. Probably one, the, the way was one because as I told you, it was the father, but especially because um, they were focused together and they, and, 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 and then, as I said before, a mother of luck because no matter, even if you read 10 times with a young actor and then at the second week he came to the set, I don't know, drunk. Or you know he right. he passed the night dancing somewhere and it never happened. No, never one minute of late. Never somebody that didn't know his line by heart perfectly. Never somebody who complains so much better than big star that I, that I directed. It was ready. So I thank them. I think the story was so compelling that that had to help. Yeah, people. exactly. Such a compelling story. So a couple of other questions. Um, let me find them. One, um, somebody wanted to know if you're where you are right now. Are you in a university library or where? No, I'm in my house and this is, uh, no, this is a backdrop. Okay. Uh, it's like your backdrop. So <laughs> I'm in my house. I wish I had a, a, a library like this. It's in the same style, but honestly, it's not so beautiful. Not so big. But <laughs> But no, it's not so beautiful and not so big. Uh, but the, the style is not so different. That's why I put this picture. But today, it's a birthday of, of a friend of my kids, and they're partying the other side of the house. So <laughs> I'm in a little spot of the house. I, I prefer to put a backdrop of this. I can relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> Other than yourself and your children, you have a favorite performer that you have worked with. And the second part of that question, is there someone you would like to work with who you've not worked with yet? Yeah, I mean, you, if I have a favorite in this movie or if I have a favorite in, in I mean, in the movie. I think both. All right, in, in the movie, I really have to thank a lot Domenico Fortunato, which is the guy who plays the archivist, as I told you oh, before. Yeah. He came with me, he did a really great job because uh, you did not know Israel, but he made a perfect, perfect mix between what Israel was, his voice a little, he had something not perfectly well done, but kind of sexy and rude and ma very male, and the voice of the archivist. And it mixed it perfectly, the, the two stars that we had, Israel and, and the archivist, because it was his character. And he pushed me to go to the synagogue, to go to the temple, to meet this guy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he said, I want to, because it works like that. I mean, you probably know what the method is, you know, the, the method Stanislavski, when an actor to prepare for his role, go deeply in what the, his character life he is so to make an archivist he wanted to know an archivist and know how an archivist works so he spent a lot of hours with claudio but when he told asked for me would you like to come and say yes so in, in a way he pushed me and he made me known and, and and i think it was great and he was another father that helped me a lot about what you call a, a good a good feeling, a good, okay. you know, union between them. It was never, it helped me without uh, taking 
too much space because that's another problem. If you know the kids have two, in a way, directors, they do not know who to follow. It was there to check on them, to help them, but without giving them instructions about what they have to do. And right. He, and he was even able because Domenico is a director too. So I have to thank him. Uh, Jen, in general, who are my favorite, I have a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> but the, the, the first one who came in my mind is Meryl Swip, an actress uh -huh. that I had. I had the lucky moment to know her because uh, she's a good friend of my wife. So I met her and uh, and I, the, the, the fun story that when I met her, we had we get a picture together. That and so I posted on the on like on Instagram and the and the post said I met God. She is Mary Street. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's so if you want to make if you want to check on my Instagram profile, that is this picture. <laughs> and, uh, and 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 she is one of of the stars that I would like to work with one day, and who knows? Well, it's possible. She's your wife's friend. You've got a connection. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Why not? Why not? Um, and is there a project that you're currently working on? Because we want to know it. We want to see it. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'm working on a, um, on a new version, very uh, strange version of Macbeth, Shakespearean yeah. Macbeth. But I mixed it up with the kind of, we call it mafia, even if it's not mafia anymore. I mean, you probably know, all of you, the Macbeth, it's uh, about the greed of power and money and to become king. I put this guy, a little, uh, small time criminal that wants to be the boss. So he kills to be the boss, to be a big, you know, like the Godfather. Uh -huh. So it's an ancient tragedy put in nowadays, and I'm working on this script. And the title is The Damned. That's our what is it? I'm sorry? The Damned. The Damned. Oh, cool. the it damned? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm working on. Completely okay, so different. Yeah, Crime story. Different. Oh, yeah. Such a different story. So, um, and where? What is your time frame for? Like, where are you at in that project? I'm I'm close. I I hope to shoot in the, um, after the summer. I'm close. So the the script is pretty pretty done. We have to make a few adjustments, and I hope the next June to go to what I'd like to shoot, and that will be Puglia. I don't know if you know that part of Italy. It's beautiful. The, east side and so I will prep there probably in, in June and July and then August in Italy you know it's kind of holiday for everybody so probably I will start shooting in or and mid end of September oh, that's I already so casted and so I'm, I'm I'm pretty close you're well on your way yeah I am that's great well we wish you the best of luck with that one because this Thank one was, this was just really spectacular. It was Thank really you. great. Thank um, you so before we close, because we are coming up close on that hour, um, I just want to make sure if there are any other questions before we bid farewell to Julio, who's been such a blessing. Thank you so much for doing this. It's been a pleasure. It's your film was was a pleasure. It was so great. I can't wait to see it again. Like I want to watch it. Again. <laughs> and 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 the I have to look into it because the the time frame for because we're doing it virtually it expires tonight and i want my daughter to see it and she's not back until tomorrow so i have to do a little finagling and, um, and sure the shot and get the link yeah i have to get the link yeah no we have yeah. the link it's just that it's going to expire so i have yeah. to get it Shannon is not alone anymore with shannon peters the peters probably i hope yes. i no, hope no, they we've got news. yeah we've got we're getting them all worked out they're already a couple I, of the movies. Now I have a question because Shannon did see the movie. What do you get from our conversation? Oh, I loved every moment of this. It just gave me such insight. Um, and I loved listening to you and your explanation 
Um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing the movie now because now I know two of your kids <laughs> are in the movie, so I'm going to look for them. And I'm really excited to see it. I mean, Good. I haven't heard, I have not heard one bad comment about your movie. Oh, not right. a one. But I do have one last question. I have How a did your wife meet Meryl Streep? Julia, um, um, I'm a refugee uh, from former Soviet Union, a political refugee. I fled from socialism persecution there and uh, the most friendly people of Italy hosted me and my family and accepted us. And, um, and we waited there to legally enter United States as a refugee after we waited by US government. We spent several months in Rome and then on the coast as well. Um, we didn't have any money because socialism was robust of everything what we had. So I need to go around, I learned some Italian, I learned the phrase io cercare lavoro, and uh, I needed to find um, the way to um, feed the family. Of course, Italian people help us, um, uh, International Red Cross help us with meals. So our story, um, I don't want it to be forgotten, and I just wanted to bring it up. Do you see the, some of the parallels, you know, how, you know, great Italian people, you know, were so welcoming and um, they uh, gave us meals, you know, they gave us hospitality and they, um, they really felt for us. And I felt that they, everyone almost with whom we interacted said, oh, I have a cousin in America, you know, because they have so much um, linkages between uh, those who live in a, in a home country and those who left for a variety of reasons there. And they uh, and that tremendous support and love, you know, I have, uh, you know, this tremendous gratitude for Italian people ever since, you know, we, uh, we left, you know, 32 years ago, you know, to, um, um, to, to move to the United States. So I'd like to see, is there any sorts you see there's certain uh, common themes in, uh, in that humanism, which so deeply embedded in Italian people, you know, was again demonstrated by ha housing and hosting uh, another wave of refugees because probably about a million Jews from former Soviet Union went through Italy on its way, you know, for, for freedom. Thanks for the thanks for the comment. If there was a, a, a question, I think I didn't get it properly. The question is, do you see a parallel between your story and the story of generosity of uh, Italian people and the story of, uh, of, um, of refugees from Soviet Union, which were, which were protected and hosted by, uh, by Italian right. people 40 years yeah. later? Yeah. Yeah, probably, you know, every history of uh, a human being that helps another human being, a history of, uh, of uh, you can see that, the friendship. Um, and, uh, and I think the movies are important even for this, to tell what human being could be in a bad and especially, I think, in a good way. And that's what makes us different from from animals that I like, but you know, uh, I do not think that the, the animals could receive from the previous generation something that the next generation shouldn't do. I mean, probably for instinct, for nature, but something like that, it's important that our generation tell to the next generation that what happened uh, 70 years ago should never, 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 never be repeated. And also what you mentioned, there are things that we have, uh, not only we, 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 we like to tell, we have the duty to tell and to remember. And because the memory is not just um, an empty word. That memory has to be cultivated like a plant. You have to work on it in our memory and in everybody's memory. And so, of course, what, uh, what can I say against and help for somebody else? Uh, I'm, I'm for, uh, for, a free and for a free world and uh, for a world where uh, everyone is brother to, uh, to, to everybody else. I mean, I know it's, it's trivial, it's banal, but it's like that. Unfortunately, it's not. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Julia, one last comment and one last question before we bid you farewell. Um, Sharon said that she remembers how wonderful the Italians were to her 
when she went there alone in 1984. So that again, just speaks to your culture, which is so wonderful. Yeah. Um, and she started to ask the question, how did your wife meet and become friends with Meryl Streep? Oh yeah, my wife, she's, she's an organizer of film festival. So uh, she, she welcome and she hosts a lot of movie stars between Italy and um, so we help one each other. Some, sometime one of her hosts are actors that I directed or in some, sometime happens that I know from her events and movie stars like that. So it's a mutual, another, another, another time, the mutual Another collaboration. Uh, like, like this is love, but I mean friendship is the same thing. Brotherhood or sisterhood have the same thing, and uh, and if we think the human being as being brother, that could help. I know that they say things that are uh, trivial, and but they are truth, and we have to repeat them. <laughs> Absolutely. So thank you so much, Julio. This was so delightful, just like your film. I mean, this was just wonderful. You are a breath of fresh air. Thank you so much for meeting with us. Thank I you. Can't everybody thank you enough. Too. It was really my pleasure. So ciao, man. Ciao, ciao, everybody. Take care. Stay well. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Bye, everybody. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thank you for being here. It was my pleasure once again. Ciao. Ciao.